Hi everybody, it's Allie, and today we are finally going to be doing another long overdue plot structure video. It's been a hot minute since I did a plot structure video. The last one was my three act plot structure video that I made quite a while ago. I will leave that linked above so that you can watch it first because this one is kind of an expansion on that structure. The plot structure we are going to be discussing today is the expanded three act structure method as outlined in K.M. Wyland's book, Structuring Your Novel. I have mentioned this book in a previous video on the six books every writer should read. It is very similar to three act plot structure, but it adds some additional elements. So I thought this would be a perfect video to do to show how you can kind of add on to the three act plot structure as a baseline and come up with something that is somehow still unique. K.M. Wyland's structure begins with a hook or a kind of opening shot or opening image. This is something that is also used in film. You have your introduction stage no matter what the story you're writing there's always going to be a beginning but the idea of a hook is that it makes the readers care about all of the information you're about to dump on them rather than giving them a big info dump at the beginning and telling them all of these things about the characters and the world and the setting and all of these things that they don't have any reason to care about yet the hook gives readers a chance to care about the characters and specifically to start asking questions that then will be answered in later scenes it kind of keeps the readers engaged while also learning all of that information that they're going to need for the rest of the story without getting bored. The hook kind of stands apart from the rest of the first act. It is obviously part of it, but it can be the first scene, it could be a prologue if you're doing that. It could also just be the first line, creating a really engaging, hooking first line. But it's not quite the same thing as the next thing we're going to talk about, which is the first half of the first act, the introduction and setup stage. Once you have sufficiently hooked your readers by giving them a really interesting hook to latch onto, you can start feeding them some of the more world building or character building information that they're going to need for the rest of the story. This is your chance to start laying the groundwork for the setting, the world, the characters as they exist in their day-to-day -day life, any relationships that they have, and their kind of general way of being. This is your chance to kind of set all of that stuff up, enforce the fact that you want your readers to care about this character, and that you want them to understand and care about this world that they're living in. Just like in the traditional three-act plot structure, Cam Wyland's first act is going to take up 25% of your final story, so you have plenty of time to get all of that info and all of that character information out into the open in that first half of the first act. So not the full 25%, but certainly a good chunk of that is going to be dedicated just to talking about your characters and your characters interacting, showing their relationships, showing their setting, showing all of that stuff that you want your readers to know and to care about going forth into the rest of the story. Once you have established the main cast of characters, introduced their day-to-day -day lives and how they live and interact, it is time to start introducing the stakes of the actual story, the actual plot that is going to be changing and shifting these characters' lives. This second half of the first act is the remaining part of that first 25%, where you are going to start peppering in all of the elements of plot and of whatever turmoil or conflict is awaiting your characters. This is where that element is going to be set up. The idea of Chekhov's gun is that when you introduce a gun hanging on the wall in the first act, by the second act that gun should be fired. So this is the same kind of idea. In that second half of the first act, you want to include the foreshadowing elements that are going to take place or have something to do with the following acts, the following scenes, the following story as it goes. Obviously you still have time here to get more character information out and you don't want to just purely talk about character in the first half of the first act and purely about plot in the second half, but you do want to focus more on one or the other depending on what part of the first act you are dealing with as far as K.M. Wyland is concerned. The first act in this structure is really there to give readers all of the puzzle pieces that they're going to need later in the story, as well as telling readers what characters are important, what settings are going to be important, what are the themes of this story, what are the tones of this story, and that is something that they're going to carry and keep in the back of their mind throughout the rest of the narrative. Once the character introductions and establishing the stakes are out of the way, it is time for the end of the first act with the first plot point. 
K.M. Wyland's first plot point is very similar to what the first plot point is in the traditional three-act structure, and that is a huge earth-shattering event that is a point of no return for your characters and for the story as a whole. The first plot point should be unexpected, it should be life-changing, it should be earth-shattering. It is not just a blip on your character's radar, otherwise they would have no story, because so much of the rest of the story, especially going into the second act, is going to be about how your character reacts to and takes action as a result of the first plot point. There are two other plot points in K.M. Wyland's structure for the first act, but they don't have a specific placement in the narrative. They really depend on where your story is taking your characters and how you're choosing to tell the story. And the first one of those is the inciting incident. This is something that we know from even learning about basic storytelling in school. The inciting incident and the inciting event can occur at really any points leading up to the first plot point. It can be something your character engages with actively, or it can be something that happened well before your character entered the story or well before your character even was born. So an example of that would be like in Harry Potter, you could argue that the inciting incident of that story is Voldemort coming into power, which happened long before Harry was born. But then a second event happened, this is called the key event, and that is an event that occurs where your character is brought into whatever the repercussions of the inciting event are. So Harry's parents being killed by Voldemort would be the key event that brings Harry into the story that was set in motion by the inciting event of Voldemort coming into power in the first place. After the first plot point, we move into the second act, which is also split into two by K.M. Wyland's structure, just like the first act. However, in the first act, you remember we split up kind of vaguely based off of focusing more on character and introduction of setup, and then more on plot intrigue and plot setup and setting, rather than having a kind of vague line separating these two halves of the second act, we have a very clear separation, and that is the second major plot point, also known as the midpoint, which is going to occur roughly 50% into your book. The first half of the second act is very reactionary. Your characters have just gone through this terrible event that was the first plot point, their life is changed forever, and now they need to come to terms with what that is going to mean for their new normal. This is the part of the story where your characters are going to learn new skills, they're going to hone existing skills but for new purposes, and this is also the point where certain subplots might come into play or existing subplots will also alter and change in reaction to that first plot point event. This is not to say that the first half of the second act is meant to drag or be boring, but it is very reactionary. This is more so the time when your characters are going to be running away from the enemy rather than running towards it with guns a blazing. This is the point in time where your characters need to step back and react before the midpoint shatters their world once again. As in traditional three-act structure, the midpoint is a turning point in the novel. It separates the two halves of the story as a whole from the character whose earth is shattered and then needs to learn a new normal to the hero that this character must become in whatever context that may be. The first plot point is going to be absolutely devastating to your character in one way or another, but the midpoint is going to be just as unexpected, just as shattering and life-changing, but it's going to usually inspire a kind of change in the character that is going to not only turn the tides of the story, but turn your character onto their second half of their character arc, where they're going to be actively taking action against the antagonist or the conflict, whatever force is acting against your characters in this moment. Rather than running away, they are running towards the issue. After their lives are completely changed again in light of the midpoint, we have the second half of the second act, which is very different from the first half. There is a character shift that occurs in the midpoint or in very close proximity to the midpoint, your character has decided to stop reacting and start acting, and what that's going to look like is really going to depend on your story. It could be something very small or it could be a huge uh, character shift. But one way or another, there's more agency going forward into the rest of the story. I should note, however, that you don't want your characters to be 
too perfect. You don't want their character to have come to a full completion by the midpoint because then the whole rest of the story is not going to be as fulfilling, especially with that character in particular. Your character is going to learn just how imperfect and not ready for the end of their character arc they are at the end of the second act leading into the third, called the third plot point. The third plot point is the last big bang in the story before the climax. This is another unexpected, life-changing plot point, and most likely it is going to lead straight into your character's lowest point. After that second half of the second act, your character might feel completely ready to go forward and knock out the bad guys, but the third plot point is going to tell them how very wrong they are. Not only that, but it is probably going to turn out very badly for your protagonist and the people that they love. The third plot point not only sets off the high-paced, action-packed adventure that is going to come in the third act, but also serves to kind of knock your character down a peg after all of that build up that they had in the second half of the second act. The third act of your story is going to take up the remaining 25% of your story. And when you consider the fact that that includes not only the third plot point, but also the climax and the resolution, that is actually not a lot of time for you to get all of that stuff done, which is why third acts are so fast paced and require so much tension and payoff. That's why we put all of our setup in the first two acts. Where the climax of your story occurs within that third act is really going to be up to you and what story you're telling. but Whenever it happens, it needs to be big. The climax is what all of the story has been building to. It is the point of the story. It is where all of the tension, all of that setup we did way back in the beginning at the first act is finally going to fully, completely pay off. And so it needs to be huge because it's also relatively, in terms of plot, the end of the story. Everything that comes after this in the resolution, as we'll talk about in a second, is really mostly about character payoff and subplots, not so much about the main plot anymore. The climax is the end of the story, so do it justice. The resolution begins the moment the climax ends and trails off into the final lines of your book. While you could technically end your story after the big climax, it doesn't feel like a justified ending to all of those readers who have spent this entire book listening to you when you told them to care about these characters, to care about their world and care about their settings. All of that stuff that you did way back in the first half of the first act is really what matters in the grand scheme of things. The plot was big and flashy and things happened and things were exciting and there was a lot of tension and all of that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, you started the story with your characters and you should end your story the same way. Give your characters a moment to react to the climax, give your readers a chance to breathe, and your characters as well a chance to kind of sit back and figure out what to do next. If this is a series, this is a chance to set up where the next book is going, and if this is a standalone, this is your time to send off your story and send off your characters in the most respectful way you can. That is not to say that the story must end happily or that every loose end must be tied off, but it does mean that you should give at least a little bit of resolution, according to this plot structure, to have a successful and complete storyline. And that, my friends, is K.M. Whelan's expanded three-act structure. I hope you guys liked talking about how three-act structure can be expanded upon and how it can be the same and different from the original method that was created in ancient Greece in Aristotle's Poetics. What I've covered here in this video is actually only half of this book. The whole second half is about scene structure and about characters and character development and all of that fun stuff. So let me know in the comments below if you would want an additional video talking about her discussions on scene structure or character development. I would be happy to talk about those as well. Additionally, if there are any other plot structures you would like me to discuss in a video like this, please let me know. I would love to research and explain more plot structures for you in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then give it a like, and if you like my content, do subscribe. I make videos every Friday, and I will see you all in the next video.